Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Metabolic Classroom. I am Professor Ben Bickman, biomedical scientist in all things metabolism and professor of cell biology. One of my great pleasures is to explicitly study fat tissue. I am a fat scientist. That is one of the cell types that I explore the most, whether it's cells, fat cells growing in my lab in a Petri dish, or whether we are taking biopsies of fat from humans to study how fat tissue works. Uh, drugs for fat loss, and specifically the GLP-1 agonists, these are going to encompass virtually any drug where the uh, the suffix of the name of the drug is a uh, lutide, like semaglutide or liraglutide. Indeed, semaglutide being the most common. That's the one that is in the very, very popular drugs, uh, Wagovia and Ozempic, and used in other ones as well. And they have different trade names even that continue to kind of stack onto the complexity. So there's a lot of different ways you can call this. The main mechanism of drug uh, of action rather for the GLP-1 agonists is the redu the reduction in cravings now remember remember being uh, me saying that because you watched it before um the earliest use of the GLP-1 agonists was used at a much lower dose than is commonly used now and this was a dose that was effective at inhibiting glucagon insulin's opposite Whereas insulin seeks to reduce blood glucose, glucagon seeks to increase it. And it's, in fact, a hormone that most diabetics type 1 and type 2 struggle with. In other words, diabetes is just as often a disease of too much glucagon as it is a disease of too little or not functioning insulin in the case of type 1 or type 2, respectively. So at the lower doses, GLP-1 agonist drugs worked by reducing glucagon and thereby improving diabetes. And then at these higher doses, the, the famous mechanism of action now is that food is moving much more slowly through the intestines. So whereas in the untreated individual, they eat a meal and the food sits in their, sits in their stomach for, say, three to four hours or so before you know, getting mulched around, before moving down further into the small intestine for digestion and absorption, the food may sit in the stomach for up to 24 hours or something, uh, a much, much longer time. Um, and because of that, you just don't want to eat. So it really starts reducing cravings. Now, one interesting note that I did not discuss before is that one of the common side effects of these drugs is – sexual dysfunction or a loss of libido. So when cravings are reduced, it goes beyond just the cravings of what you're going to eat. So that's just something to consider. And again, they do work, no doubt about it. By stopping eating, you will lose weight. As I elaborated earlier, however, up to 40% of that weight loss can come from lean mass. And then if the day should ever arrive that a person decides to get off the drug, they will regain their fat mass very easily, but the ability to regain that lean mass that they've lost is really going to be um, dependent on a lot of variables, particularly age. And if we're talking about someone who's a little past middle age, good luck gaining that lean mass back. It's going to be very, very difficult if possible at all.